This video is sponsored by Uniformation. In the last video I 3D printed axial compressor. At first it didn't perform at all, but after some design changes I blow up the rubble glow. My goal was to blow up the balloon, but this didn't happen. There was nothing I could do more with this specific model. But what I can do, to start all over again with a different model. This is exactly what I'm going to do today. I'm going to build not one, but two axial compressors to improve the performance from the last video and maybe blow up finally some balloons. The first model I'm going to build I found from Hackaday website and it looks promising. This one has five stages and after every stage the space decreases. The last one had only two stages and the space didn't decrease. This one has to perform, but we will see this really soon. The second compressor actually is not an axial compressor. This is like two centrifugal compressors aka turbochargers in series. The correct way to call it is a centrifugal compressor. This one is not so widely used as traditional axial compressor, but an example where it is used is a Blaine APU. And I mean multi-stage centrifugal compressors. If it has only one stage, it probably has volute casing and is called turbocharger, which is used in most of the cars. In this video I will build both of them. How they perform, we don't know yet, but we will figure this out really soon. To get this project started, I printed rotors and stators with resin. For the printer I used Uniformation GK2, who are also today's video sponsor. For the resin I used ABS like resin. By the way, if you are looking for a printer that can print extreme resolutions and have large pool volume, this is something you are looking for. This printer has 8K monochromic screen, resin heating, pulled in eye filter to keep the bad odors out of your room, extremely comfortable interface and pool bed is pre-leveled from factory. What I especially like how convenient it is to use this printer. After print is done, you can take the whole pool plate and place this into the washing machine. No more messing around with the resin and having those annoying resin drops everywhere. Also you can use the washing machine the traditional way. By the way this washing machine is the best I have ever used. It works by ultrasonic waves. That is why this cleans the models better than any other washing machine. Also you have no risk breaking models which have lot of fine details. It's impossible to not give attention for the curing station because it cures models so fast and also it looks so beautiful. So I sliced my models with their own slicer that comes with a USB stick. Move the files to the printer and it did the rest. By the way this printer is also pretty fast. I haven't used a lot of different resin printers previously, but it is by far the fastest that I have used. Also the models are perfect. I like how well the print sticks on the boil plate. They are strongly attached, but not unnecessarily strongly that you have a hard time removing the models later on. Again if you are looking printer that provides high resolution, is convenient to use and looks great, Uniformation GK2 is the way to go. And also don't forget the washing and curing station, those are amazing. Now when everything is printed, here is all we need for this project. Rotors and stators are printed with ABS like resin, but the rest of the things we need are printed with PLA. The building is really simple, it starts by laying the rotors, stators and spacers in the right order like a sandwich. It's important to keep them in right order and everything faces right way. When I got this done, I secured everything together with M5x100mm bolts. If it's built correctly, it should look like this. After holding this in my hands, I'm sure it performs way better than the model from the last video. Next I had to get this into the housing. Sounds simple, but it took a bit time and messing around. When I finally get this done, I realize I forget the shaft. So I took this out again, hammer the shaft through the rotor and get this back into the housing. Second time it was way harder by the way. The final thing to do is to attach the front and end cap, but before, some bearing has to be installed. For the testing I designed some mounts to the compressor and motor and attached all them to the wood plate. It seems to work right now. Can it blow up rubber glow? Well, this was easy, kinda unexpected for the first time. But the balloon. For this, I have to use a bit different end cap, because I cannot attach the balloon to the compressor. Meanwhile, it's printing, I'm going to build the second compressor. For this one, we don't need so much part as the last one. The housing in two pieces are printed with PLA and impellers with uniformation GK2, again with ABS like resin. We also need one bearing, a shaft, and some M5 screws. 
I started by filing one side of the shaft flat. When I got this done, I pushed the shaft through the both impellers, hammer to be exact. Added one bearing at the end of the shaft and placed all this to the one side of the housing. Somehow the shaft is too long, I don't know how because I measured it, but anyway, now I had to cut a little extra way. After this, I added the other side and connected them together with M5 screws. There is obviously some friction and impellers don't spin freely. Clearances are really tight on this model and well they have to be to get a good result out of it. But my plan now is to set it up and spin it a couple of times to wear it in. And after this I sprayed some VD40 into it to lubricate itself. I think it worked because now it spins completely freely. So I can continue with the testing by starting again with the rubber claw. By the way, don't forget, we will test the first compressor more after this one. But let's see what this one will do. It exploded a bit early. Also, there is a lot of PLA debris inside. It indicates something really wearing inside there. But I continued and attached a new glove to the compressor and started the test again. This time I stopped the test because I heard bad sound. Also what was kind of weird, that the claw keep the air even if I squeeze it. Probably the veins are completely blocked. We are going to take this apart and see what is happening in there. To be honest, I was ready to do something way worse. The housing of course have some wearing damage and there is a lot of fine PLA debris. But on the other hand, the impellers are completely fine. So now I'm going to fix the clearances and print a new housing. And I hope I get at least some result out of it. But it takes a bit time, so we can continue with the first axial compressor. Now it's time to see will it blow up finally a freaking balloon. Only one way to find out. Well, what the fuck. Now I'm using S4 battery instead of S3. Let's try it again. Still, it didn't blow up the balloon. I wanna test this compressor more, so I took some plastic kitchen bags or whatever they are called. I don't know those things with what you can pick up the dog shit. So I tried to explode those. This was like nothing, like for sure this compressor does some work, maybe the balloon is just too ambitious goal for 3D printed axial compressor, I don't know, but for sure this compressor works and I'm satisfied with the result with this one. But now we have one last thing to test more, the dual centrifugal compressor. Now the new housing is printed with greater clearances, so I put it together. For sure, it spins more freely than before, but how it perform? I started with the balloon test and sadly, it didn't happen again. But it seems like a bit more power and it will do it. I think it's the best result I have gotten so far. But do you know what is not the best result so far? The debris what is inside the balloon again. Like, I don't know, it's like the half of the housing on my table in the powder form. Really, I didn't give a shit and I continued with the other things. So far, it has performed reasonably well.
but they had to stop the testing because the reliability is questionable. And by the way, every time the plastic bag exploded, my room was instantly filled with this PLA debris. I was insanely curious what happened inside there, and it had worn even more than the last one. Obviously, this is the biggest issue with this exact compressor. As long as it was usable, it worked completely fine, but it just didn't do it really long. My conclusion, both of those compressors worked fine and performed pretty much equally, but I liked the first one way more, because of one simple reason. After the tests, it is still a working device. It didn't wear, and to be honest, I didn't have any problems with the first one. But still, the two-stage centrifugal compressor is really interesting concept and it worked looking into it once more. Don't be surprised if I do it pretty soon. I'm 100% sure, if it's just designed a bit better, this type of thing can be 3D printed and will perform crazily. But this was it for today's video, I hope you enjoyed watching my attempts pulling 3D printed compressors. If you did so, maybe hit the subscribe and like button, it's completely free and helps this channel more than you think. Big thanks for watching and see you guys really soon with my next project video. Bye!